Hi, Billbox. Okay, so I just wanted to insert myself really quickly. This is just me cutting myself into the video before you get to see the actual video, which is an intro to the I Heart, I Heart Radio reaction. So in case you didn't read the text that you just saw like two seconds ago, I know some people skip it. I know I'm going to get a few comments asking, where is the I Heart Radio? reaction and i just want to say the link is in the description below it's uploaded to vimeo instead i had to cut it out of this video because um iHeartRadio actually blocked my reaction which is surprising because as most of you know their first exo iHeartRadio interview i reacted to that and i had no issues which is why i reacted to this one i was gonna watch it either way but i reacted to it i'm pretty sure it's because it's a 35 minute long video um as soon as i try to upload this whole this full video which if you combine this section of the video that's currently on youtube and the actual reaction it's an hour and 30 minutes long but i cut out that the reaction um and i had to upload it to Vimeo because that's the only way I can and so please use your web browser I think that's like a better way to watch it um, if you watch it like on your laptop or your PC or whatever and I think you can also download it at a lower quality some people had issues downloading it um, also I wanted to address something that I didn't address in this part of the video so what you're about to watch it's 17 minutes long because I ended up this was supposed to be an intro into the I heart radio reaction and what ended up happening was I ended up venting and sharing my thoughts about the whole Jongdae situation with the aunties and all the hate going on currently. I ended up just like talking about that and expressing my feelings on it for 17 minutes. So this just became an entire video by itself. Um, so FYI, this video what you're currently on is just me talking about the Jung Daddy situation again, like kind of part two and how I feel. I also want to address something that I didn't talk about um, earlier today in this video, which is I'm kind of touching on like the whole like fantasy world and I kind of understand like a lot of people have fantasies of these idols like obviously they portray themselves as like you're like someone you admire and someone you can fall in love with and that and so it's like it makes sense that people will fall in love with these people like these idols and celebrities and put them on like a pedestal but I'm I needed I, I didn't talk about this but I realized all these toxic fans they really feel like they got cheated on like they really feel like they like actually got cheated on which is so like if when you're when you make your entire world about that other person and you really like that's your entire world like i think that's where it's all stemming from and a lot of the kxols i feel like they really felt like joan daddy was their hubby or their boyfriend for real for real like not just in this like playing house like this is sweet i love them you're my bias you're my boyfriend type of thing like you know how i'm always like joined daddy's mind and i'm always fighting with my sister we're not actually gonna like kill each other one day we're just like we're still playing around i mean we still is like back off that's my bias like i still is standing by that but i'm i don't actually we don't actually think we're gonna marry them and i said this a few times in my videos i don't actually think i'm going to marry them and um, there was also a lot of talk about the KXOLs claiming that, not every KXOL, but um, the toxic ones, KXOL, they're not really XOLs, um, claiming that they are the reason why XO, like they, they promoted them better than the international fans and they spent all their money on XO to support them and that they, they're, they're claiming that they're better fans and... I guess because they spent more money on EXO. I don't know. They were saying a lot of this. I don't even think those stats are right. Like, I feel like as a collective, like, the international fans have probably helped with the sales as well. Like, equally. I don't know. I don't I don't have the stats. But just to say that you're a better fan because you spent more money makes no sense. Even if those stats happen to be true or something um you spending money on an artist doesn't make you a better fan you using your money on certain things doesn't make you a better human money does not make you a better person what makes you a good true loyal fan is being there to support them through thick and thin and i cannot express that enough i already talked about this i'm already talking for five minutes about this but uh yeah money i didn't that no money does not make you a better fan 
if you want to support an artist, you support them with your love, you send them encouragement, you send them messages, you you play their music, you listen to it. If you truly, truly, truly are passionate about an artist, if you really love their work, then you will spread it around and you just spreading it to another person, even just one person, makes you a fan, okay? So that's all it is. That's all it takes. It doesn't even take a penny. So anyway, um, on to the video. This was supposed to be an intro to my iHeartRadio, and so this is now becoming an, another... Oh, oh my god. So anyway, bye. See you there. This is a mild Americano, and I just want to say and put out there before anyone thinks that I'm just copying Baby Beck, I loved Americanos before I even knew he liked mild Americanos, but now it makes me love him even more, and um, that's why I call him my spirit animal, but just saying that Baby Beck and I have some connection, and no, I'm not trying to steal him, I'm just saying that uh, I'm drinking a mild Americano, and I'm just saying. So anyway, hi folks, welcome back. I thought I would come back and, I thought I would come back as soon as I could, as quickly as possible. Um, if you saw my obsession live stage yesterday, I did XO and XXO comeback stages, or I believe that's, is that called a comeback stage or are like the shows when they perform on those Korean shows, the comeback stage? Oh, okay, well anyway, um, I reacted to that last night and I saw a comment actually asking me to talk about, to, or to share my thoughts on the whole negativity circulating around Jungdae's news and at first I was you know I thought why what else would I say other than they're crazy <laughs> um, but then I figured I would kind of talk a little bit more about it the aftermath of <sighs> the Jungdae situation um, and how I feel about it and my impressions and a little bit about that and um, Afterwards, I will watch the iHeartRadio interview that EXO is on and I'm very excited because this is 35 minutes long and I think it's perfect because it's something that came at such a great time because the title of this interview is called EXO Talks About the Importance of Their Fans and I I was like, this is great. I'm going to watch this right away and I, and I figured I would react to it because a lot of you likes to, like to see my journey as it continues and I think that's also important um not just like to be entertaining or whatever I don't think I'm very entertaining at all but just like to share my thoughts and opinions and a lot of you like it when I see more of their personality um on the inside you know because that's what matters and this is what I'm about to talk talk about I was very very alarmed <sighs> the past few days after I I made that video about Jong Daddy um him announcing his girlfriend, fiance, and a blessing, you know? <laughs> um, after that, I saw so many positive comments under my video and how you all felt that pretty much exactly how I felt. Um, uh, and I felt so much, I saw so much love and support and that made me so happy. But then I decided I'd finally, I, I would talk more about it because there is so much negativity and hate still going on about Chen and it's like it doesn't make any sense so I'm gonna talk I'm, I'm gonna rant and I need to vent a little bit I, I held my stomach as if I'm pregnant or something <laughs> maybe I'm the baby mom I'm just kidding I'm kidding but I want to like let you guys know how I feel because somebody asked me to share my thoughts and I thought yeah why not um, even if one person is interested that's what I'm here for and so um, okay let me start with last night so y'all know I use Twitter religiously and i woke up around 1 a.m S some something a group of people were so loud i couldn't freaking sleep anymore and i woke up i was like what is that noise and i check i i open my twitter app and i see boom right in my face number one worldwide trend is kxol's don't represent me and i was like whoa what is happening? That loud, loud, loud group of people were XOLs. And I'm like, holy shit, let me get in on this because I need to know what's happening. So I click on it. And of course, I under already understood what it was about. It's a lot of KXOLs where they are spreading around so many hateful tags asking Chen to leave the group. And they're just being so toxic. They're spreading so much hate. And it's so frustrating to see the betrayal 
the betrayal from these people, these exo wells. So ugly, so disgusting to see, and it it is also so hurtful because this is not every single KXOL, but they're representing a huge group of KXOLs. Like the toxic ones are the very loud ones, you know, but we can be louder. So to to see that the KXOL just don't represent me, tag trending number one worldwide, it got me so like if it made me feel so warm because you can just see the amount of support and love through that tag because when you click on it you can just see that there's so many people like no that is not a true fan if you're gonna show hate and like that why am i crying <laughs> just that's like story of my life why am i crying but if you like seriously it's just the betrayal you feel when you find some when you find these people betraying your family member it's like oh uh, you were never in this family to begin with and so i want to say to a certain extent um, my, my initial thoughts were, I was like seeing all the hate and I was like, what is wrong with them? Like, why? What is going on? Like, I also empathized with, I empathized with every single person who felt that initial sadness or shock or feeling of like, <gasps> like that crushed feeling from the sudden and unexpected news because it's, it's kind of like somebody stirring you awake out of nowhere, like no warnings, no anything. Someone stirring you awake in the middle of a really good dream or you know finishing a really great great book that you've been reading for for a long time or like a like finishing your favorite movie it's it's that idea an idea that felt so warm and has comforted you on your loneliest nights like those types of feelings suddenly like you have to wake up and be like hey like slap yourself a little bit and be like hey <laughs> like get out of your your fantasy world for a second and breathe and see like what's actually going on in the real world you know so that's the feeling that i empathize with because i can i can understand why some people are sad like it's just kind of normal if you are if you feel that so passionate and if you love um an idol or you know so if you have someone you look up to that much and you get this kind of news it's very shocking and then um yeah, maybe your heart will break a little bit, but like I said in my first video about Chongde, um, it's more about that, like, it's more of the sadness you feel like a, like a parent sending their child off to college, you know, but you only want the best for them, that kind of feeling, exactly what I said the first time, and it's not because you don't love them anymore, you love them even more and more, you know, and because, um, you know, to be very honest, we all have dreams about them and we all have this little fantasy well not all of us but some of us do and you know some of us have that little comforting part in our soul like if jongdae is your old bias or whatever like that's someone who something an idea that you feel like is yours but then now you gotta let it go because it's like reality hits type of thing but to live in that fictional world forever is unhealthy. Like, I, people do it. It's it's honestly a common thing. It's like more people do it than you think. Um, but you need to wake up. Like, if it's affecting you that much, right? And <laughs> because, like, some people just need to be slapped in the face. Like, I wish I could punch some people through the screen. Because I need, and I want to scream in their face that these idols do not belong to them. And they never did in the first place. It's okay to, like... It's okay to dream about them, but that's what it should, you know, you should only think of it that way. And I know coming from somebody who uh, screams at music videos, who <sighs> whose heart goes out of control and flip-flops, and you can hear me squealing and making really weird noises, like, through my reactions. Someone who cannot handle a lot of live stages and music videos, concert reactions, all those things a lot of you were worried because you thought I was one of those Delulus and I kind of am like I said I am a little Delulu but what I'm saying is these feelings I am that passionate and I hope you understand that this passion comes from a place of unconditional love it's not delusional love you know I am in love but in I'm in love with this family and it's unconditional love so if you truly love them as a fan as an XOL I hope that you will support them and you will love them unselfishly because that's what you should do and you should care about their happiness um but to send hate 
anyone sending hate and asking this beautiful soul, this angel to leave, all because... Uh, I, it's just so ridiculous. If you're going to... I can't even say it because it's so ridiculous. To send hate and ask Jongdae to leave EXO, all because they decided to be a responsible adult and take care of their family that's absolutely ridiculous <laughs> and uncalled for i don't get it and i never will and those people who swim in this wave of toxicity they are delusional and i hope you never ever take part in something so ridiculous um and i don't believe you will because all of the i'm pretty sure 99 percent of the comments under that video that i made about the f me reading jongdae's news um I know all of you are very level-headed, logical, smart, intelligent, all of you, and I just I just needed to vent because it's so stupid. Um, and at the end of the day, Chen will still have the same voice, and his high notes will still reach the heavens, and God forbid, for whatever reason, he stops singing one day, he will still have the same heart, and he will still have the same laugh, and he will still have the same cute little kitty smile and that cute little Pikachu-ness about him. Like, he will still be that same person you loved from the very beginning. He's still Chen. He's still Jongdae. He's still my Jongdae. And he's going to be a real Jongdae now, and he's a human who's still growing and still trying to improve himself every single day and still trying not to feel just like you because he's a human and this goes for all of them Suho, Minsuk, Lei, Kai, Sehun, Baekhyun, Chani, Kyungsu. I really really will hate myself if I forget anybody else but all of them this goes for every single one of them and every other idol out there this is the same thing and this is the same idea, so let this be a lesson that this doesn't change anything, no matter who you are, and it only shows who you truly are as a fan. Um, and it's very heartbreaking to see that there's such a huge group of people um, taking part in such negativity, and it's like... <laughs> like, what I learned... I'm trying not to cry because I cry too much, but what I learned this past year, and I'm so thankful for, um, being a part of more than one fandom, you all know, clearly, and if you don't, you do now, but, um, what I learned this past year from learning about EXO is that we are one is not just a phrase, it is a promise, and it means family, and you don't turn your back on family, and you support them through thick and thin, and you cheer for them when they're at the top, but most importantly, you lift them up if they ever fall down. But in this case, it's so stupid because he didn't even fall. If anything, he set an example to any other idol. He set an example to his brothers, to anyone who is afraid to date, to start a family, to anyone who wants to love, like, to be themselves. He made that okay by speaking out and saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do, and... I'm owning up to it and I'm gonna tell you. And this is something we should celebrate. And this is the last time I'm saying this. <laughs> we should celebrate it because the most beautiful part about this news is that now this family is growing. This family becomes even bigger. And I said this in my pinned comment. Um, I wrote this in my pinned comment, but I never said it out loud. But like, please, please put it in your mind. Please really, really, really understand and really soak this in that the most precious human on earth is about to be blessed with the most precious gift of life. Honestly, that is the most beautiful thing. He's about to bring a clone of himself, a Jongje 2.0 into this world. He's, he's letting an angel step into this earth, this undeserving earth 
worth earth i worth i was trying to say world and earth at the same time but we are not worthy of this you know so if and when this baby pops out everyone better get on their knees and start praising and start praying and start celebrating y'all better buy balloons y'all better send pictures to him send pictures to their his brother to baby beck to chani to sehun to suho to all of them send it to min sucks dms in his instagram even though i hope he's still checking them email dio email jong daddy the jong daddy email lay i mean he has a twitter but y'all this should be a celebration and i know i've been ranting about this for almost oh over six now 16 minutes but please this is a precious gift and i would like to congratulate chen jong de my jong daddy he will always be my jong daddy like i tweeted out jong daddy was jong daddy even before before he became a jong daddy jong daddy has always been a jong daddy he he became a jong daddy and now he's a real life jong daddy which makes him a hot dilf <laughs> and please congratulate him for his humbleness and his courage and his strength and his bravery for being a positive role model to everyone else in the industry and to us his family and remember that being a fan doesn't mean being here from the very beginning uh, you it doesn't mean you know like if, if you feel bad because you were only here for like a few months or I, I used to feel a little bad because i only knew exo for this past year but remember it doesn't matter if you were here from the start what matters is if you stay till the end and that is what a true fan what a true xol is and I hope you I hope you stay with us. I'm here and I love you and that's all I wanted to vent about. This is almost 20 minutes long. So I will start the reaction video now. <laughs> I wanted to put that out there. So thank you for listening to my venting. Uh, I know a handful of you had to sit through that. And if you skipped, hello. We're gonna watch this now. Okay. I'm proud of myself because I didn't really cry that much. I think I'm kind of over it. I've cried a lot between this whole, these few days. I cried a lot. Now we're gonna watch. This is, wow, this video has to come out to be like an hour long. But those are my thoughts and thank you so much for listening if you did. And we're going, <laughs> should I watch it like this? <laughs> 